I'm Lucy Baker, the Senior Communications Manager here at Guilford Press, and today I'm joined by Brian Chu, who is the co-author with Sandra Pimentel of our new book, CBT Treatment Plans and Interventions for Depression and Anxiety Disorders in Youth. Um, Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And um, congratulations on your new book, which is uh, such a just a much needed resource right now. Um, the CDC has reported extensively on the teen mental health crisis and the rise of teen sadness. How do you think your book um, is uniquely positioned to help clinicians um, support their adolescent clients? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I'd say that that was um, one of the primary real um, incentives for us to get this out. And, and we started this book several years ago, and so it was even... Um, a, a concern, a significant health crisis back then, but it seems like it's just grown in them with everything that our kids have been facing in the last few years, for sure, it, the concern has even just grown. Um, particularly over the last few years, our kids have been just facing so many challenges, um, whether it's feelings of isolation to the, the renewed reckoning with social justice to navigating social media demands and and just having lost out on so many important milestones like cancellations of extracurriculars, graduations, and more. It just we are seeing just so many kids having to manage intense levels and enduring levels of anxiety and depression. And what our, our book is designed to do is not to resolve everything, but to give one more key tool set um, to our colleagues out there, anyone who really is working with kids. Um, it's uh, really designed to be um, um, accessible and flexible and useful for anyone wanting to uh, implement a flexible CBT-based um, approach with young people overcoming sa sadness and stress in their lives. And it can be used for any by any professional background, really psychologists, psychiatrists, even primary care physicians, educators, um, coaches, um, our colleagues who work in the child welfare um, domain, and even clergy and others. And, and what we try to do is really start with trying to address real world questions about the kids who come into our clinic doors or where we come into contact with them, um, provide diverse case uh, studies and try to use some tried and true methods and strategies to help address some of these current modern day concerns. Yeah. One thing you do emphasize so much is this um, notion of flexibility um, and personalized treatment plans for kids and teens. Why do you think this is preferable to a one size fits all approach? Um, and how do you, and how does your book help clinicians think on the fly? Well, I'll be honest, um, the, some of the other kind of incentive for this book um, came by using the original um, uh, 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 Bob Leahy and uh, Stephen Holland uh, CBT treatment, plan, um, uh, treatment plans uh, book for adults in my own work both in the counseling work that I do and also in teaching my classes for uh, graduate students, I found it so useful in the way that they laid out a structure where you could take basic fundamental CBT strategies, lay out a plan and have all these resources and worksheets and handouts available was so useful. And my students found it so useful that when we were invited to come and do a version for youth, kids, youth and adolescents, we thought it was just an obvious uh, need because um, there's special issues that are really um, called for when you're dealing with youth and families. Um, and we're finally at the place in our field um, where we start to recognize the great diversity that comes through our doors and not just in diagnostic and clinical complexity, but also in culture, personal identity, life circumstances. And so having a, a, a set of tools that allows you to address all that kind of diversity is, is key. Our approach starts with teaching or trying to relay the core fundamentals of case conceptualization, functional assessment, and really helping clinicians get comfortable with the ongoing assessment process, like what situations tend to get my client in trouble, how do they respond, um, why do they act in, the, in ways that seem to be non-constructive. And then from there, um, they can try out any of the number of interventions and strategies that we recommend. And by focusing on those core processes first, we really hope to um, focus people on the the, the core decision-making process and ease and make that simpler so that clinicians, once you get comfortable with that, can spend their energies in session focusing on what matters most, which is really paying attention to the child or family in front of you and really getting to know them and applying and 
and really tailoring these strategies to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, your book is exceptionally user-friendly and it has 52 uh, reproducible, reproducible handouts and worksheets um, for use with parents or other professionals. Um, out of those 52, can you highlight maybe like one or two that you think are particularly useful or were, you know, unique when you were constructing them? Yeah, we do take great, great pride in, in really laying out all those different resources because we think that busy clinicians don't have time to recreate. Everyone could create something themselves, but it's helpful just to have something that it can be printed out um, and adapted to your personal context very easily. And so that's what we um, really take pride in doing. And, and I think what we one of the unique features of our book is how much we acknowledge the multiple systems um, that impact youth. We have separate chapters. Um, somewhat different than some other, um, you know, similar books would have laying out guidelines for collaborating with psychiatrists, um, working with caregivers, working with schools um, to help with that. Um, you know, we create a physician cons consultation checklist. Um, that chapter was um, co-written with Uri uh, Meller, who's a, a psychiatrist himself and um, is able to really help us think out what is the information that we need to organize for ourselves when we're uh, seeking a consultation with a psychiatrist or a physician. Um, how do we kind of present the information um, about the patient? How do we um, follow up with, um, with follow-up recommendations? And so um, that checklist helps organize um, clinicians in going through that process when working with schools. It's so critical because the school system is so key as, as collaborative partners um, with us um, in working for uh, uh, any kind of anxiety or mood issues, and particularly in the the um, how they relate to school attendance um, problems. And but what's important is like working with any consultation is that their time is so valuable. So if you get a consultation meeting, what you want to do is be really organized. And we have a number of resources that help kind of lay out what are the different roles that different stakeholders can play. And so we have um, um, resources that help in kind of guiding that process. And certainly for caregivers. Um, there are so many ways in which um, parents and other caregivers um, really can can review their own um, interactions with their kids and how they can help support their kids uh, managing stress. And so we have a, a, a just a plethora of worksheets and handouts to give you know common sense information and then worksheets to help um, parents identify their own interactions um, patterns that they have with their kids and then um, identifying how, uh, they can do their own chain analysis to see where it might be the ways out of these traps, and then also building functional daily reward uh, uh, programs that help incentivize kids to kind of move towards using the coping skills that they um, uh, that will be most useful for them. So there's a lot of different resources we use to help concretely clinicians help communicate with the people that they're working with to help the kids that they're working with. Oh, that's so great. Um, you co-authored this book with Sandra Pimentel. Um, can you talk about what it was like collaborating on writing a book? Uh, and are there particular thoughts or strengths or areas of expertise um, that each of you brought to the project? Well, it's so nice. I mean, I, it, it was both, it's so easy and so necessary to, to have this collaboration with Sandy. Um, you know, she's she's um, the chief of child and adolescent psychology at Montefiore Medical Center. And uh, I'm currently a uh, professor and, and department chair in clinical psychology at Rutgers University. And so we bring different perspectives, uh, Sandy more so in a, in a, um, a, a medical center um, and my from a traditional kind of uh, teaching and, and uh, service and research center. And so we brought many different perspectives, access to different experiences, working with kids and families and working with different kinds of colleagues and also different kinds of students and trainees. And so it was so complementary, um, And so there were differences in our perspectives, but then also it was so easy because we had come from similar stock having both done our graduate work at Temple University, initially um, training under uh, Philip Kendall um, at Temple. And so it was both easy, but it was so necessary because it's so, on a project this big, it's, it's so critical to have both different eyes on a project, different ideas, but also have someone else to push you forward. And I'll tell you, um, I think we, we tended to kind of approach this in an old fashioned way. Um, we did a lot of work uh, kind of independently, but we did a lot of work together. Um, so many of, um, uh, so much of our writing happened on Sundays, like countless Sundays in coffee shops in New York and, and in New Jersey, 
Um, and, and that working side by side was really critical in brainstorming vignettes, strategies, worksheets, and handouts that ended up in uh, the book. And so um, it was really a joy to work with Sandy and also a necessity. And I just can't wait for our next projects. That's so, that's so nice. I love that image of you at the coffee shops. It's really, um, you know, you can see that it was such a great partnership and you really, you know, lifted each other up to to build something great. And a lot of money on caffeine, that's for sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. sure. Um, lastly, we'd just like to know a little bit more about you on a personal level. So when you're not working, what do you like to do for fun? And in terms of work, is there a project that you're excited um, to work on next? Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for asking. And and that that kind of thread is also embedded. I hope that people will find in reading this book, it's not just about techniques and strategies, but you'll see a lot of um, um, humanness and humor and personality that uh, Sandy and hopefully I bring um, to the stories uh, um, in the book too. So I hope you see this. But you know, for me, um, you know, a lot of uh, my um, um, you know, time and, and value center around my family. I have two young kids. And so I spend a lot of time uh, just chasing them around. We uh, spend so much time in swimming and ninja camp and um, all sorts of things that we love uh, doing and, and getting to really know uh, their personalities. Um, and uh, we're also just, our family is our, our big um, foodies or food um you know, fans. And so we we uh, do a lot of cooking ourselves. Uh, my son and wife love baking um, and creating all sorts of uh, neat uh, confections. And so um, that's always um, fills up a lot of our time and and, and thankfully so. Um, and I'll always say that some of the, uh, the, the nice silver lining of, of, of COVID in the past four years was that during those lockdowns, um, it really did, while it was stressful and very stressful for a lot of families with, with um, kids, it also, um, really provided a, a unique time for us to spend together. And so I do appreciate that. And that influenced a lot of the, the work and examples like I'm in this book. Um, professionally, um, we continue to work in this way, just trying to really understand what are the best ways to help the different types of kids that come into our doors. And so um, my team at Rutgers is working on a, on a, um, a big clinical trial where we're trying to compare different kinds of um, behavioral treatments to our homegrown transdiagnostic behavioral activation therapy that's designed for anxiety, mood problems, and anger. So trying to create a real streamlined uh, protocol uh, that can help address all those multiple problems that come with a lot of our kids um, in a flexible um, and, and, uh, and simplified format. Um, because as we've talked about earlier, just having more tools that can help with different kinds of kids is always desirable. Um, so that's what we have on, on on my front. I know Sandy's got some real exciting things coming up. Um, she herself is the the president elect for ABCT, the Association right. of Behavioral and Cognitive Therapies, and so um, you know she'll continue to represent um, the field um, uh, and the the promise of behavioral therapies. And um, we look forward to see, seeing what she accomplishes in the in the future as well. So um, it's a busy time, but we're we're glad to kind of help present this and hope that it gets it's helpful um, that this resource is helpful to people out there. Oh, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Thank you so much. We're very excited for the book. Well, thanks, Lucy. Thanks for having me. Sure.